So, okay guys, today I decided to do something different to help me pick a topic. And what I did was I just went um, through some of my old videos and I saw what got the most views and I wanted to do basically a derivative to, to what I felt you guys were most interested in. So today is going to be another one of those Zodiac videos where I'm naming 10 things that turn an Aquarius off. Because the video that got the most views and uh, which I, I feel like you guys are most interested in was 10 signs that an Aquarius woman loves you. Now, I want to just speak on behalf of the females once again because I know that Aquarius males can have totally different mindset than us women. So, I want to just keep it to where I'm speaking for the majority of um, Aquarius women. Now, everybody is well aware that there's different placements in their chart. So, I'm talking about if you just have the slightest Aquarius in your chart, whether that be Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, <laughs> Jupiter, Mars, Venus, I don't care. But at the end of the day, wherever prominent placement you have Aquarius in, then this should relate to you, even if not every single bullet point that I named from one to 10 relates to you, at least one or two things should definitely resonate for you. If you're an Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Jupiter. So I'm just going to hop right off into this video. I can't think of any shout outs that I need to put out there today. So I'm going to just get started guys. And like I said, if you're an Aquarius and you have some things to add, go ahead and put that in the comment section. If this is your first time watching a video of mine, hey, welcome to the Soul Tribe. Go ahead and hit that subscription button, the notification bell, hit a like, and also comment so we can get to know each other, honey, because I follow on all social, uh, social media platforms as well as offer you guys that information. So I'm Dominique V. Johnson on Facebook. I'm Dominique Valentine on Instagram, and I'm Dami Valentine on on Snapchat. So go ahead, add it up, <clears throat> follow me on social media, and I would definitely follow back. If you also have a YouTube channel that you would like for me to follow in return or subscribe to in return, go ahead and leave that in, in the comment section. And I will go ahead and proceed with supporting you in return because it's all about reciprocity, like I stated in the last video. So we're just going to hop off into these 10 things that turn an Aquarius woman off, honey, because <clears throat> I've been single for the past five months. And honestly... I'm not going to sit up here and act like i just been this goody two-shoe that haven't found interest in anybody. I found an interest in a handful of people, but it doesn't last long. And that's one thing about an Aquarius. You may be able to get our attention, but the hard part is keeping our attention. If you keep our attention past a few weeks, then just know that you're special. And it's been some people whose attention I've been unable to keep. So I'm not just going to act like the ball is every single time in my court. Because sometimes it's in the other person's court as well. So we just going to pop off. Get off into this list. So the number one thing that we cannot stand is passiveness. It's like if we're interested in you, we're trying to get to know you. We're asking you questions. And you just basically dry Honey, dryness is fake to us. Like, we don't like that. For one, we don't like small talk. If we asking you questions, it's because we're genuinely trying to get to know you, trying to get to the core of you, and we plan on using that information in a positive way. Ergo, we, we plan on eliminating anything that you dislike and trying to implement things that you do like in order to make you more comfortable and to make the relationship more harmonious. So if you just kind of got a passive attitude, like, I don't know, it don't matter, that's going to come off as arrogance to us. And even though some people peg us as being arrogant, I feel like we only are when it comes to our, our intellect because we have unmatched intellect in the Zodiac. Sorry that that came off as arrogant, but everybody knows it too. Everybody knows that Aquarius are thinkers, that we're intellects, that we're innovatives, uh, innovative spirits that we're creative, that we're thinkers, and that sometimes we can overthink. So that's the reason why we kind of pride ourselves on our intellect. But we like 
humble people and I feel like we're humble as well so at the end of the day if it's somebody that just comes off way too arrogant like they got better things to do than to be talking to us then they will be doing those better things because they will no longer be talking to us nine times out of ten if we ain't already got one foot out the door that's where we'll lose our interest it is if your attitude is way too passive and you don't seem interested and you seem too far removed from what we trying to do which is get to know you so that we can start something up. And even if you are in an established relationship and you acting passive, then that's definitely a red flag to an Aquarius that you're starting to retract your interest. So nine times out of 10, not trying to say that we have to beat you to the punch, but we definitely give the energy that's given. So if we feel like you're retracting your interest in us, then nine times out of 10, we're going to fall back because we're not the type that's going to beg for a connection. It either rolls naturally or it falls by the wayside with us. So that's number one. We do not like passiveness. It turns us off. Number two, codependency. Now, everybody is aware that there's going to be some level of codependency in every situation. Relationship-wise, friendship-wise, even family-wise, everybody is probably going to have a little bit of codependency. Okay, when I say codependency, I mean codependency to the extreme. Like you feel like that person can't go out and have any time to themselves. They can't go to work without you blowing up their work phone, their personal line. Damn near getting them fired because you're so needy that you have to talk to them every step of the way, every day, every second. I mean, not every day because I do feel like couples should touch bases at least once a day. Whether it's good morning, good night, how your day been. But if you not... In the same household with your partner, there definitely should be some communication every day. So don't get me wrong when I say that. What I mean is, okay, babe, I'm at work now. I can't have my phone out. I'll talk to you later. And that person still texting you throughout the day knowing that you cannot talk to them. It's like, okay, I'm about to get in trouble because you're texting my phone when I told you I can't text at work. Stop being so needy. And for those who don't understand what codependent is, codependent is when your emotional your emotional state of being depends too much on your counterpart. That means you're not happy unless you talk to them. They basically control your level of happiness, you know what I'm saying, to the point where you cannot let them go out into the world and be themselves and be a separate entity from you. And then come back together at the end of the day and be that one unit. It's like you depend too much on that person. And so that can be emotionally or that can be with addictions as well. Like another um, example of a codependent relationship is a person that's dealing with an addict. Like if you deal with an addict, you will see like they depend on you because they're not even functional to the point where they can go out, hold down a job, and take care of their own addictions. They literally are depending on you to go to work, make the bread, and give you their paycheck so they can go and buy whatever it is that makes them emotionally balanced. Whether that be drugs, alcohol, pills, whatever. So that's one, that's another example of that. But what I mean by codependency is people that are too emotionally reliant on their counterpart. It's like, you have to have a life of your own. You have to have goals, ambitions, and a mind of your own for an Aquarius to feel like you're strong enough, for you to be strong enough to deal with an Aquarius, period. Because if we notice that you don't have a backbone, and that should have probably been something else that I named, but I have something close to that, so we'll just leave that as that. If you don't come off as the type of person to have a backbone, even if the relationship... um has a good run it's not gonna be a forever thing because we have to have people that's as strong as us or even more strong than us especially if we're the woman we have to have a man that's more strong than us because we are already strong as it is mentally strong especially so number three controlling now if you don't know in Aquarius, we are rebels without a cause. If you don't know what the rebel without a cause is, we just be breaking rules just because we don't care. It's like if, if somebody say we're not supposed to do it, we do it just because we want to push the envelope. It's like, who said? Did God say? Did my dad say? Okay, then. Then I'm going to do it. 
you know, it doesn't matter if it's even breaking a law. And I hate to admit that about us, but that's definitely one of our negative attributes is that we are rebels without a cause. So a lot of us, we just break rules for the fun of it, just to say we're above the law or we, we can do it. So if we got a, a partner that is controlling, it it would drain us to the point of feeling debilitated. Like, even if we go along with it, like, you know what? I'm going to just change my whole view and how I feel about being submissive because I really, really like this person because I'm not saying that um, Aquarius can't fold. We will try things that we don't normally like, but I will say that we will lose ourselves in the process. Um... I tried to submit to a situation that was like really controlling just simply because that person was like simply the love of my freaking life. And I wanted to listen to everything that they said, but it was very day to day life was so stressful because I felt like I wasn't being myself. I feel like I was only putting on a mask to be accepted by the person that I loved and cared about. And that's just not how an Aquarius rolls. And when we step outside of our normal everyday role as an Aquarian and the things that we do and the things that we're accustomed to, then, or if we change who we are as people just to be with somebody or please them, then you will notice that. Like, you will notice us not being ourselves. You will notice us unhappy. You will notice us feeling completely drained and debilitated. And that's because we're losing ourselves in the process of trying to please somebody and we can be people pleasers sometime but for the most part it's kind of a take it take us or leave us type of um response when it comes to dealing with us it's like okay if you don't like what we bring to the table then go and find exactly what it is that you're looking for because this is how i am as a person so normal, typically, like I said, that's our attitude when it comes to people. But if we really, really like you and we try to submit, we will completely lose ourselves to somebody that's controlling. And that has to have a say in every single thing that we do. So that was number three. Number four is inconsistency. <sighs> the worst thing you can do to an Aquarius is show them this knight in shining armor side to you and then fall off the face of the planet we basically consider that ghosting us so we can't go talking to you every single day just being completely serenaded and saturated in your love get used to talking to you get used to the to the showering of love and then suddenly one day that just stops it don't even like slow down before it stops it just stops or it just becomes too inconsistent to even consider anymore that not only is a turn off but it confuses us and when the moment that somebody makes us feel confused you can pretty much say that our instincts is going to tell us to fall back or back up and like give that person some space being that it 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 just appears that somebody's feelings change if they change up their your everyday routine in a relationship or it might not even be a relationship it could just be the two of you courting getting to know each other and um you know you guys have this deep connection bond where you like have to talk at a certain time every day and then all of a sudden that just stops us being overthinkers, over analytical, we're always going to assume the worst, which may not be something positive on our end, but inconsistency definitely is not positive on our partner's end either. You should always be consistent in a situation. And when it's, it's something that happens for that consistency to slow up, then that needs to be verbalized. Like, okay, I don't feel the same. Okay, I, I met somebody I like equally as much as you, and I don't know who to choose now. Like, You'll be surprised how far honesty can go with us. And <laughs> that's crazy because number five is liars. We cannot stand liars. Everybody knows that Aquarius and that some people can call us fake and fickle and a lot of shit. But honestly, the only reason why they consider us fake and fickle is because we can change how we feel just like that. Being, oh, uh, and what I mean when I say that is... If we notice certain things, sometimes we don't even say we notice it because we feel like, okay, it'd be a waste of our time to bring this up to that person because either they're going to deny it or act like it's not a big deal or act like we overreacting or acting like we overanalytical or overthinking things and that we're not being right about the situation. 
Well, we don't have time for people to be denying what we know we already see and we, we know this. So a lot of times we'll switch up because we see that change and people consider that fake and fickle. But in reality, we just think we just piece something about you that we just wasn't feeling no more. So we went on with our business or we fell back and or we just like took a step back to observe to see what it is that you're going to do to bring this back to center. So you the person that took it off center. Let's see what you're going to do to bring it back to center. And if it never gets back to that point, then nine times out of 10, yeah, the connection going to fall by the wayside, rather that be romantic or platonic because we don't have time for people showing us the same patterns that we experienced in the past and as for us to be expected everybody knows that <laughs> the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting different results so my thing is if somebody come to us and a new connection and they repeating patterns from our old connection which we already learned the lessons of then how are we supposed to take that? Like, I'm not about to sit around and wait for the same shit to happen that happened in my past situation. I'm going to take that as a red flag. Like, okay, this seems familiar. Toodles, you know what I'm saying? And that's not trying to make it seem like people are disposable because they're totally not. But at the same time, people got to understand that more than one person's feelings and emotions are involved in situations when you get involved. And like I said, and I'm always say this because connections are connections. They don't just have to always be uh, a, like a one-on-one -on -one, um, romantic connection. Sometimes I'm actually talking about friendships too, because the only thing that's removed from a friendship that's involved in a relationship is the physical aspect of it. The the same thing, you know, reciprocity, respect, honesty. Is re integrity is required in a friendship just as well as a relationship. So, again, when I'm speaking on connections, I'm talking about in all realms. So, definitely talking about friendships too because we can get turned off from people that we consider good friends at one point. So, again, number five was liars. And by us being as honest as we are, um, we expect honesty in return. And people would be surprised at the response that they would get from us, the respectful response that they would get from us, if they just communicated with honesty. I think what makes us tick as far as like um, going off the deep end um, with people is like literally being lied to, like feeling like we've gotten fooled is probably one of the worst things that you can do to an Aquarius. Like just keep it 100 and you'll be surprised at, you know, what can transpire, what can transpire from what you thought was going to be reacted to in disaster or what you thought you was avoiding because you're not avoiding nothing by lying. You really just causing more of a catastrophe because once we find out, the chances of us reacting badly as opposed to us getting the honest truth from um, a friend or somebody that we're in a relationship with is uncanny. Like you don't want to see a Aquarius on their bad day or when they feel like they've been fooled or when they feel like they've been lied to. So your best bet is to grow some balls and stomach the fact that you have a confession and an apology to make. And do it because being a liar is like a deal breaker to us. Like we're totally turned off and removed from people that cannot be honest. Because it's like, what can you do with somebody that lies? If they lie, they'll do anything and everything else. Which brings me to number six, which is receiving mixed signals. And basically, I feel like that possibly could have been um, under the same guidelines of inconsistency. But at the same time, um, I'm going to just put that out there as its own individual thing. Mixed signals, again, we don't like people that try to confuse us. So if it's like, oh, you know, you know what in, um, mixed signals remind me of is that song by Jay-Z. And he had somebody featuring that was blowing the hell out of the chorus. And the song was called Holy Growl. And I think it came out in like 2013 or something like that. But basically, like um, like when they said one day you screaming you love me loud, the next day you so cold. 
And I know that, that everybody is capable of that because people have their good days and their bad days. But when, when that when that inconsistency and mixed signals is just showing up too much or too long to where we feeling like, okay, this is going to be a constant thing and I can't deal with it. Um, that may be something that'll have us pull back. I'm not necessarily saying, you know, mixed signals to have us in things like we'll be patient and wait for you to be clear about what it is that you want. But if we keep on feeling that, um, it keeps resulting to mixed signals, then nine times out of 10, you know, we're going to end up ending it. And honestly, we good for ghosting too, even though we don't like being ghosted, we good for ghosting simply because, most of the times when we in situations that are coming to a close, we've given multiple, multiple, multiple warnings like, okay, this is getting irritating. I'm not liking this. I'm not comfortable with this anymore. And if we're not being heard after multiple, multiple, multiple warnings that it's starting to get uncomfortable or it's starting to get a little confusing to the point where we don't know where we stand with you, be it friendship or romantically, then nine times out of 10, we just going to silently remove ourselves from that situation. And that may be, that may seem like, okay, that lacks integrity. You guys want integrity, but can't give it. But in all honesty, it doesn't because those warnings that led up to that, that final decision to like, to break the connection is more than enough. You know what I'm saying? So when you have somebody constantly telling you something that makes them uncomfortable and you continue, I don't want to say to go out your way, but you continue to like not care enough to change that, then we're going to take that as a sign that this is something that you don't want either. And eventually we're going to lose our feeling for it. And eventually that losing our feeling for it is going to be us separating ourselves from you. And we're not going to think you care enough to even receive another warning or like, oh, okay, this it, I'm out the door, you know, because we've already said that maybe three, four times more than that, or, or three or four times or more without any to no avail or whatever. So basically, um, that's the situation where a person can get ghosted in. Okay, so number seven is we do not like copycats or people that can that, that don't have a mind of their own. Like, please, if you're going to be with an Aquarius, make sure that you're a leader as well. We are already natural born leaders. And honestly, a leader doesn't want to be with a follower. As much as it may seem like that goes hand in hand, it doesn't. Like, a, and, and, and maybe, maybe for a man, he will want to lead and have his woman follow. But for a woman, we definitely want a man that's just as equally mentally strong as I, as we are, as I stated at the beginning. So when we have a mate that it, it seems like they don't stay in their lane for nothing, it's like every little thing we do, they have to do behind us or, um, that's going to make us feel more like you're trying to be competition than that you just trying to match our fly. It's like let an Aquarius have their own mind, something that we really 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 respect his individuality like if we see anybody that's just trying to set them set themselves separately from the crowd or they don't mind being unique even if that means they they're weird we respect that because we don't like people that blend in we don't like to blend in number one so we come with our own creative individuality even if that's weird to others and when somebody like goes out their way to duplicate that, it's like, okay, I went through all of that to not be somebody's complete duplicate. And here you go looking like a freaking DNA copy. I don't want that. And honestly, that affects me more with friends than it does lovers. Like I have had a couple of lovers where it just seemed like any little thing I do, they follow suit. And, you know, instead of me taking it in a negative way, I kind of took it more as flattery because it's like, oh, they want to match my fly. But at the same time, too much of it was kind of sickening to me. But that really affects me when it comes to friends. Like I've literally cut off friendships and stopped talking to people that I was fond of because I noticed that I couldn't do anything without them doing the same exact thing. And I'm like, 
I was born a single child out of my mother's womb. I don't have a twin and I don't want a twin because to me, that just signifies weakness. Like you don't have any ideas of your own. So you have to leech off of the closest person to use every thought, every idea, you know, every decision. It's like, no, be an individual, be strong enough to make your own decisions because that's what an Aquarius likes. That's how we present ourselves. And that's what we like to see when it comes to the people that's going to be in our close social circle, connectivity, whatever. It doesn't matter. The people that we are closest to, whether it be family, friends, lovers, we want them all to have their own minds. We know that that's not possible out in the outside world, but at least the people that we're going to see on a regular basis, we would prefer for them to have their own mindset, their own style, their own level of creativity, their own ideas. And staying in their own lane is so important to us. Like, we have to be able to have our own individuality. And I'm, I'm not going to reiterate that no more. But that's a big one for me. Like, that is a big one for me. And honestly, a lot of times, the reason why I take it offensive, and then I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm going to go on to the next one. But this one is a huge one for me. I do not like cap copycats. Like, I've been literally so close to people that I have literally just cut contact off because... It almost seems like competition. I'm like, what is it? I remember when I was in culinary school, it was this girl I was cool with. And, like, we even looked alike a little bit. But um, it was like when it came time for instruct, like, um, like our, um, what do you call it? Um, exams. Because we would have an exam at the end of each month where we had to basically use skills that we learned in a month. And I would notice her like peeping every ingredient, peeping what I was trying to do, even if I would try to keep it on low. And she would literally throw the same shit together and like rush it to the teacher as if it was her idea. And then I had some signature dishes that I was making like on the weekends to take to birthday parties or when I was catering or something. I had some signature dishes that I was using that was like my own individual ideas and she made it one time and took it to a somebody party and she posts pictures of it and the reason why I didn't like it wasn't because I feel like nobody else in the world can make it but it's like you know the person that made it and that's like plagiarism to me it's like give credit to the person that you know originated that idea and it just got obsessive, like single black female, where she was like going out, like, if y'all don't notice, like, I rock all different types of color lipsticks. She was going out buying the same color lipsticks as me. We was just looking stupid, come to school looking exactly alike. And it was burning a hole in my soul. I hated it. And I couldn't, like, like, I, I thought that it would make me look so mean if I told her, like, look, can you stop fucking copying off of me? Because I hate it. It's stupid to me. So I couldn't, you know, like, but I would express it to people like, you know, people would be like, people noticed it like, girl, y'all wear the same color lipstick and, you know, it seemed like everything you do, she got to do. And I'm like, I was trying to hold it in, but yes, I noticed it and it freaking annoys me. Um, I've also had mates that do that too. And like I said, it goes from like a point of flattery of like that person has a great deal of admiration for you to the point where it's like they trying to see if they can be the one to do it better. And I'm just like, okay, at the end of the day, the original is always going to be better than the copy. That's what people need to understand. So have a mind to your own, stay in your own lane and let just pe just let people do them. If, if you see that somebody likes to be unique, likes to be different, don't like to fit in, then just let them be them. You don't have to be like, okay, we're going to not fit in together. That's that can be cool, but not fit in in your own way, okay? Because Aquarius don't like that. That make us feel, make us feel suffocated, and that make us feel like people that's close to us are trying to compete. It's it's not cute. I don't like it. But um, okay. So that was number seven. Number eight is cheaters. Duh. That's like who? The f Nobody likes cheaters unless you want to be in an open relationship. You're not gonna like cheaters. And honestly, if you're in an open relationship, I don't even think it's considered cheating. I think it's more like polyamorous or something, which y'all know I'm not against that. And that's the reason why I'm not. It's because it implements honesty. <sighs> Somebody that's like wasting your time, bringing back negative energies of freaking. I don't know, just like, 
whorish people, like people that's just as whorish as you or whatever. But, um, like that's one thing about it is I don't like cheaters because most of the time in a relationship, besides the times that I admitted to you guys that I had revenge sex, I'm faithful in relationships. Is If it was my choice, my choice would be for both people to be monogamous and only exchange energy with each other because I don't have time. I'm too I'm too sensitive energetically to like um have you go and like pick some hoes out of a brothel, sleeping with them and then bringing their hoish energy back to me. Like why should I have to deal with that when I'm at home being faithful? I don't. Like go be with another hoe or whatever. So that's one thing that turns me off. Like when I say literally I'll go from having the hots for you from one to be intimate with you all the time to just being completely turned off, removed from the relationship sexually, not want to have sex with you at all. Definitely not want to put my mouth on you. Definitely not want to let you, your skin touch my skin without any protection because nobody got time to be catching diseases when they out, when they not out being a whore. So that's one reason why we don't like cheaters, especially if you have a faithful Aquarius because also, Aquarius are known for being cheaters too sometimes. Like I said, I have cheated in the past, but the times that I have cheated definitely was revenge sex, which I don't do anymore. That was in my early 20s where I felt like it was revenge. As a grown woman, of course, I know that it's definitely not revenge being because nobody cheats on you if they truly care about how you feel you know what i'm saying like if people know that their actions are going to ultimately result in the demise of of your um emotions then you need to think about the fact that why would they care if you cheat because obviously they didn't even care about how it would make you feel that they were cheating so think about that a lack of intelligence child oh my gosh let me tell you something when people even tell me that i'm beautiful and they spell that why oh you are you're beautiful like just you're like you're like a possession <sighs> i'll block them immediately i'm sorry i know that that sounds super rough but at the same time if you don't know the difference between why oh you are or why oh you apostrophe er uh you don't have no space in my world and that's not that may sound arrogant but at the same time Again, I can't even I can't even emotionally or physically connect with you if I don't have a mental connection with you. So if you don't even know the difference between there, there, and there, or then, 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 then the I don't know, but it's like so many grammar things that's like close to each other, but not the same thing. And when I notice the person don't know the difference or can't just in general can't spell can't talk right when it comes time because I'm totally, I mean, I'm, everybody know I'm well-rounded. I know how to speak really proper, but I know how to be really hood. Like I can be Mary Poppins or Tupac, you choose. But at the same time, it's, it's great to have that balance of, okay, you know, I know how to be laid back in the hood with my friends. And then I know how to walk into an establishment and hold a conversation with a highly intelligent being without them being able to tell that I know how to act hood with my friends, you know? So that's super important because if you bring that person around important people, do you want them to be able to know how to carry themselves? If you take them to an expensive restaurant, and I'm pretty sure that this can go for the guys or the girls, but if you have a work event or if you want to take this person out, you don't want them to be out acting uncouth or like they don't have any home training. And and just being intellectual has a lot to do with that. Can they hold a conversation? Can they speak proper English? You know, it's not about if they use that on an everyday basis all the time, 24-7, because that's boring. But they are, it's cool for them to let their guards down when y'all behind closed doors and when y'all just on a chill scene out and about with peers. But it's like when it comes time to hold an intelligent conversation, are they going to embarrass you? Or can they even hang with you? Forget about what other people think. Are they able to hang with you when it comes to having an intelligent conversation? That's something that can be, should be considered. Number 10, people who don't take no for an answer. 
Y'all, if my hair wasn't slicked back in this tight ass ponytail, which is kind of cute, and my lips is too. So. But, anyways, I don't like people that don't know how to take no for an answer. Once I say no, I'm good, don't do, um, what do they call that? Um, the power of suggestion, because the power of suggestion don't have no power over me. Somebody that's constantly suggesting that I do something that I do not want to do is only going to make me not want to be in their life at all. Respect somebody when they say the first time. And you know what? There probably are indecisive zodiac signs that don't know what they truly want or truly don't want. But Aquarius is not one of them. We know what we want. We know what we do not want. And we want people to respect that. When we say no the first time, let that be the last time we got to say no. If you, are you sure? I mean, I really just think you should try. That is freaking annoying to us. Like, we do not like it. Take no for an answer. Respect another adult when they tell you they don't want to do something. And it can be just as simple as, I don't really want to make this example because honestly, I can get myself in trouble. But, I don't know. Just period. If it's a social event or do you want to go somewhere and you know it's like that's not my scene i'm straight and they they want to keep asking you every week the same thing or if they keep telling you okay you know you need to get out the house more and you're like okay well i am but right now i'm working on some things and they just keep making it seem like you got to get out like do i have to get out for myself or do i have to get out for you like relax like if somebody said that they're busy working on something they have a project for one, get them that space and respect them. Like, don't keep on saying they need to get out because you feel it's important. Let them do it when they feel stifled, when they want to break away from their work. But don't be a distraction. And that's just one example. Like, there's many, many examples. But just to, just to summarize it, I just can't stand when somebody asks me a question. I get them a clear cut no as an answer. And I got to keep hearing it and it keep resurfacing every time I turn around. It's like, respect my decision to not want to do that. I'm an adult. I'm 35 years old. If I don't want to do it, you are not going to have any influence on it. If my mind changes, it's going to be because my mind changed, not because you changed my mind. So I always say what I mean to me when I say, and I'm pretty sure that it's other Aquarius across the globe, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter that feel the same way. Now, that was number 10, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of 10 things that turns an Aquarius off. That way, if you got an Aquarius that's an apple in your eye that you're trying to court, whose attention you're trying to get, you will know exactly 10 things. It's a broad, it's probably a broad, broad list, but I summarize it down to 10 just to help you guys out because I know sometimes we can be a little bit hard to figure out. But this video is almost at 40 minutes, so I'm about to wrap it on up. I hope you guys enjoy. I love you very much. Be well. Till next time. Namaste.